Good evening. I am Natalie Panic. One day, I'm going to travel to space. I'm going to travel among the stars and look back and see Earth from a different perspective. I've wanted to be an astronaut since I was a kid, and usually when I tell people I want to be an astronaut, I get two common reactions. The first is something along the lines of, whoa, I know a lot of eight-year-olds who want to be astronauts, but not many people in their 20s and 30s. And the second is that astronauts are like the ultimate explorers. And for most of my career, I thought that to be true, that explorers were people like astronauts, larger than life characters, literally traveling to the furthest and most remote places possible in pursuit of the unknown. Or maybe that an explorer was a man covered head to toe in a layer of dirt with a gnarly beard and wild hair, having just spent a few weeks in the heart of the Amazon or perhaps even a woman covered in outdoor gear with frost accumulating on her eyelashes and around her hood, exploring the polar regions of Earth. And if this is what you think of when I say explorer, you would absolutely be correct. But I think it's a bit narrow-minded because every single last one of you in this room is an explorer. Because all exploration needs is curiosity and a willingness to learn and ask questions. Learning knows no boundaries. And the significance of everyday exploration really hit home for me a few years ago when I did a trip up on Baffin Island called the Ekshayak Pass. It's a beautiful 100 kilometer journey through a river valley surrounded by mountains and granite cliffs with glaciers around every corner. And it's a bit of a remote destination, so it took us four flights to get there from Toronto. And then the last step is a two hour boat ride up the North Peng near Tung Fjord to get to the start of the pass. And I had arranged in advance for a man named Billy to take us on his boat to the start of the pass. So we met him the morning after we arrived. He helped us get fuel for our stove, and then we loaded all of our gear into his boat. And then I realized Billy's gra wife and granddaughter would also be accompanying us on the boat ride in, because after they dropped us off, they were going to their cabin on the fjord for the weekend. For the first few minutes and first few kilometers of this boat ride, I was totally captivated by the surroundings, by the mountains that we passed, by the wildlife, and all of the icebergs that we were driving by. But then I started to notice something else, and that was Billy's granddaughter. She stood on a seat at the front of the boat in her down onesie, munching away on chocolate chip cookies and seemingly impervious to the cold with the biggest grin on her face. And she asked her grandparents questions relentlessly about everything she saw, about the boat, about the cabin that they were going to, and about the landscape. And I realized that this little girl embodied everything that we hoped to find on our own journey. That awe and sense of wonder for the world around us, childlike discovery, and a willingness to question without restraint. This little girl didn't have blisters or scars from adventures past, but in every sense of the word, she was an explorer. And the world, our Canada, needs more everyday explorers, people who think intelligently about the world we live in, who are able to validate information that's presented to us, and who are able to question everything. I would also argue that exploration doesn't require expensive gear or huge big name sponsors. All it needs is an unbounded imagination and community. And this has been a fundamental truth of my career thus far, whether it was learning how to fly a plane out at Springbank Airport, studying tiny flames in a simulated microgravity environment for my master's degree, or doing what I do today building space robots, space robots that can repair broken satellites in orbit or parts of a Mars rover. And it all started for me actually right out here in Alberta, building the University of Calgary's first ever solar powered car back in 2005. We built a car powered only by the sun that we raced across North America from Austin, Texas back to Calgary. And we built this car, the first ever car, in about half the time that most other teams take. And that was possible because the team of students working on this car had an unbounded imagination. We believed that we could build a car that could travel at 100 kilometers an hour using only the sun was possible with a whole lot of passion, a whole lot of determination, and very few resources. Each and every single day we had to ask questions about how things work and how things fail in order to better understand how they work. And in those moments where we believed that 
we couldn't do it or we doubted ourselves or we were encountering failures, we had a community of supporters rallying behind us, whether it was mentors or champions in the community who kept us believing in ourselves, who kept us pushing our own limits and just keeping going every day so that we could get our car to the start of the race in Austin, Texas, and then finish back home in Calgary on the University of Calgary campus with 10,000 people who came out to cheer us on. On my last night in the Ekshayak Pass, we set up our tent between two massive rocks that felt like a fortress. And I was able to climb up on top of one of those rocks with a clear view of the valley that we had just hiked and a view of the remaining few kilometers that we had out. And I thought a lot about our journey. I wondered if maybe we missed something in a moment of frustration. I wondered if we saw everything that we possibly could. And I wondered if we questioned everything we could have in the last 100 kilometers or seven days that it took us. And I also again thought about Billy's granddaughter. I wondered if she would one day herself hike this pass. I wondered if she would one day encourage others to think intelligently and be appreciative of this beautiful land that we are able to call home. And I wondered if maybe she would one day herself have to fight to save the very glaciers that we walked past. This little girl, unknowingly an explorer in her own right, is the reason that we explore at all. Because exploration provides hope. Hope that we can and will create a better future. Hope that we will work on things we know are hard to solve some of the most pressing problems in our communities and really build resilient and sustainable communities. So I have one ask of you all tonight, and that's to remind yourself how much fun it is to be curious, to see yourself as an everyday explorer, and to more importantly, encourage the young people in your lives to be everyday explorers and to hold on to that childlike wonder that they have. Fundamentally, dream big and never stop exploring. Thank you.